Harry Garside has blasted through the ranks of Australian boxing, taking gold at the 2018 Commonwealth Games and bronze at the Tokyo Olympics. It was the latter where Garside truly came to the attention of the boxing world. With his painted nails, hairstyle and ballet dancing, Garside was something Australian boxing had never seen before. But he wasn't always destined for greatness. Growing up as the runt of the litter on the outskirts of Melbourne, he had to fight for success from a young age. 7news.com.au sits down with Harry as he takes on his biggest test to date, defending his Australian lightweight title in only his third professional fight. Harry Garside, thank you so much for joining me, mate. Hey, thank you for having me. Congratulations on your last fight. You're now the Australian lightweight champion. Massive feat. Uh, how are you feeling? Yeah, it's huge, mate. It's uh, The Australian title is always something that I wanted. It's a step in the right direction. The Australian, the Commonwealth Empire title, there's a lot of history to that. I really want that. And then, of course, the, the world the world titles in the, in the future as well. How does it feel taking, uh, you know, taking a prestigious title like that so early on in your career? I mean, it's your second professional fight. How, how is it? So many amazing Australian fighters have held that title. And uh, I just want to join some of the greats that we've had in this country. Lester Ellis, Jeff Fennick, uh, Johnny Famishon, Lionel Rose. There's been some amazing fighters that we've had in our time. And I just want to try and join that list and, and join the Australian greats. Pretty short sure turnaround, your last fight in this fight. Uh, what was the reason kind of behind that? Yeah, for me, mate, just providing there's no injuries, I don't see why you can't fight the next the next week. I'm, I'm pretty old fashioned with my belief system. And after the last fight, there was there was no injuries and I pulled up well. Um, so there's no reason why I can't fight so close together because you know I'm in this to try and be the best fighter I can be. And the only way you actually do that is to fight. So I don't like to just fight twice a year like some of the big time fighters. I like to be fighting as frequently as possible. So um, yeah, after this fight, mate, I'm sure there's gonna be a, like maybe a five or six week gap and maybe go again for sure. When do you see yourself defending a world title? Is that, when, when's that gonna be on the cards? The world title, I sat down with my team, I think two, in two years. I really wanna be world rated within the next two years and then obviously trying to fight for world titles in the next next two years and then bringing the titles back home. You have to win them overseas probably and then bringing the titles back home and packing out. Imagine imagine packing out the MCG. Imagine how good that would be, mate. And um, yeah, that's the dream one day for sure. You said it before, you're training under legendary boxing coach, uh, Johnny Lewis. Is it true that he came out of retirement just to train you? He came out of retirement, mate, for, for me and it, it's pretty special. Um, yeah, we kicked it off very well. Like he reminds me so much of my home coach, Brian Levere, and they're like, uh, they're in the same age bracket, 78, 79, and uh, they've been around the sport for such a long time. So the bronze medal at the Olympics was a failure. I'll be the first to say it. Uh, if it's not the gold medal, if it's not the pinnacle of the sport, then it's a failure. So uh, I want to, as I said, I want to be the best fighters Australia's ever produced. And uh, I'm definitely going to be walking in the right direction with someone like a Johnny Lewis in my corner. You've said that coming back um, from Tokyo with a bronze was a failure. Like, how, how, how can you even say that? You don't win a bronze medal, you receive a bronze medal. So you lose a fight in the semi-final and um, we, train for the, we train for the best. We train for the gold medal. And of course, don't get me wrong, I'm proud of myself for many things. I prepared properly for the Olympics. I showed up on fight day at the Olympics and I fought, fought my heart out, tried my best. That's all we can do as athletes. I hope if it's not me, mate, I hope it's someone else can see that and get inspired by that. And hopefully someone, Brisbane Olympics is just around the corner. So 10 years away and hopefully some young fighter takes that and, and screw the bronze, screw the silver, get that gold medal that Australia's never had. Uh, Paris 2024, could you potentially be fighting there? Yeah, absolutely. I said to my management team once I turned professional, now that we can do both, I said, I want the door to still be open. So. I think the national coach, Kevin Smith, who I have a really good relationship with, he went to the Olympics with me, he went to the Com Games with me. I think he's actually moved to a different country. So um, if he's not the national coach, you've got to kind of build a relationship. So um, if I have the relationship with the, with the new national coach, then Paris is definitely on the cards. If I don't, then I might have to weigh it up and, and, and see what happens because Having a connection with a coach is so massive, jumping inside that ring, you mean the duty of care, the safety, you've got to have a lot of trust in them. So um, I've got to make sure I have that relationship with that coach first and then yeah, make the decision then. Being a professional boxer, is there a bit of a different weight that comes with it as opposed to fighting in the Olympics? 
Uh, as I said before, mate, I put a lot of pressure on myself as it is. So whether I'm fighting at the local RSL, you mean know, my local suburb, or whether I'm fighting at Olympic Games, every fight, I put so much pressure on myself. I always expect the best from myself. So um, of course, don't get me wrong, I dreamt of going to the Olympics. I failed five times to make an Olympic team. Um, and to finally get the opportunity in 2020, of course, absolutely was nervous, was anxious, the pressure. Um, but at the same time, I was just so grateful to be there. So um, every time I jump inside that ring, the sacred, sacred square, as I call it, uh, I just feel very grateful and very honored because I love the sport with all my heart. You, the Zoo Brothers, Paul Gallen, Cambosis. I mean, these names are starting to come out of the woodwork now. Um, do you think Australian boxing is the strongest it's ever been? It's definitely one of the strongest for sure. I mean, there was a golden era back in the 70s and 80s and even prior to that, Les Darcy, he was early in the 1900s. So it's a, it's a really exciting time, mate. I'm so grateful to be 24 in a time like this. So I'm well and truly at the start of my boxing career. What was it like growing up for you? I mean, what was the Harry Garside household like? I mean, you've got two older brothers, um, Josh and Jack. How have they kind of shaped you as a boxer? They definitely shaped me being the sort of runt of the litter. I was always the smallest, being the youngest, and I was the sook of the family. Uh, I was always crying. It was always sort of getting beaten up by them, pushed to the side by them. Um, I was a lot more in touch with my mum's energy and what my mum was doing. And, and because of that, I didn't get much respect from my two older brothers and, and my dad. So uh, they never once said it specifically, but I felt that. And I started boxing in a hope to sort of, I don't know, maybe learn how to be a man or what a, what a man's supposed to be. Your last fight, like all your fights, um, you had impeccable footwork. Do you attribute that to your time as a ballet dancer? Absolutely, mate. Ballet, uh, ballet for me has definitely helped a lot. I think just doing any form of dance, you know, ballet and boxing have a lot of similarities. The power they generate through the legs, the structure, the discipline, you can't turn your back to the bar, can't wear your watch, can't have chewing gum in your mouth. There's so many things and I love that discipline and structure. Yeah. Every time I walk out of the ballet studio or doing a dance class, I always feel so amazing. So I highly recommend anyone doing a form of dance just to sort of improve their confidence and, and it'll definitely help in sport as well. I know Vasily Lomachenko, Ukrainian boxer, you've got tattooed on your leg. Um, I know his father forced him into uh, dancing to get him better in the ring. Was it a similar path for you? I've always wanted to try ballet, but as I mentioned before, having two older brothers and a dad that were pretty masculine and manly, I didn't really want to tell them that I wanted to do ballet at such a young age. So um, I kept it in and, and I finally built up the courage in 2019 and, and started a few classes and I fell in love with it instantly. And that's because of someone like Vasily Lomachenko, who, as you mentioned, did, did ballet when he was younger. And um, it's definitely helped a lot. And, at that high performance level, if it helps half a percent, then you've, it's going to make a massive difference. So, and I've definitely noticed more than half a percent. So I'm so super grateful. A lot of people see boxers as these very kind of masculine people. How do, how do they react when you tell them you're a ballet dancer? Yeah, I think the, the boxing community, not all of them, but the boxing community is pretty old fashioned. You know I mean, it's got a lot of, um, it's, it's very prominent in sort of rural areas and, and, and stuff like that. So of course, there's a little bit of backlash and uh, me painting my nails, there's a little bit of backlash for that too. So me being like, um, just me being myself, I get a little, little bit of backlash and stuff like that. But you're not gonna please everyone what you do and, and I've, I've learned to be okay with that. You've been very open with your stance on trying to break the mold of what a boxer should look like. Why have you, why have you done that and why is it so important for you? I really want to get boxing uh, or combat sport integrated into the school system because I really do think our younger generation, whether it be male or female, they would really learn a lot about themselves if they had to do a combat sport, whether it be wrestling, judo, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, whatever it is. Self-love, self-confidence, discipline, respect, so many things that they learn about themselves through the sport of combat. Uh, I think it would be so valuable for our younger generation because it's definitely helped me a lot with my confidence and, and as I mentioned, self-love. A ballet dancer and a boxing star. Surely that's going to be a massive inspiration to young people coming up. I hope so, mate. I, it's massive for me. Like I remember being seven years old watching Grant Hackett in 2004 win the 1500 meter swimming final, and uh, 2005 John Aloisi scoring that goal, and Mark Schwartz with the two amazing saves. Like those moments for me growing up were massive, and I just really hope that me through th me being myself in my boxing career and trying my best to be a good human and as well a good athlete i really hope that 
it inspires someone to take up a combat sport, especially boxing, and hopefully uh, someone gets a gold medal at the Brisbane Olympics 2032. Harry, thank you so much for your time today. Really appreciate you chatting. Um, good luck with your title defense, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you very much, mate.